Good morning and welcome to Channel B News, the only news center that hasn't commissioned an original intro animation yet. I'm your host, Tomboski Quantavius, and in tonight's top story that has been shattering the globe recently, physical games or digital games? Which one is better? We now bring in local virgin and video game enthusiast, Brandon bound to give their opinion and reasoning as to why they believe what they do. Brandon, you are live. Please give us your brief, quick, non-10-minute statement on the matter without hijacking our broadcast. Hey, 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 what are you doing? Video games. You either own them or you own them, and either way people are going to give you shit for it. That's right, you clever non-title reader, I'm talking about physical versus digital copies of video games. A physical copy, being the actual cartridge slash disc with a case, you know, slapping it in ye old entertainment machine like we've done way back then with all the dinosaurs and stuff, and digital, meaning downloaded solely online straight to the console, disregarding the need for all that external hardware nonsense. Now, without consent, I'm going to put this scenario in your head here. Imagine a huge brand new title released that you're very excited for and plan on picking up today. Do you either A, go to the store and buy it, case and all, or B, go to your console-specific online store and purchase it there? Okay, okay, alright. Now, let's say you just uh, so happen to come across someone who has answered differently from you. At that moment, would you consider yourself someone to accept the fact that everyone has a preference, or ridicule said individual about their taste in purchasable code or plastic? Heads up, this one may need to be answered a bit more carefully. Regardless of whatever the stance, however, there is still definitely an argument to be made about which scenario is the best way to consume said type of media. But before we start bashing heads over this heart-wrenching topic instead of spending this time to learn which politician could run our country better, we need to go back in time to fully grasp where each one came from and what they bring to the table. So, it all started with physical games, to be more specific, cartridges. Oddly shaped pieces of plastic that housed all the data for a game. You got your Ataris, your NESs, Sega Genesis. It's what almost everyone remembers as the main format used to access the fun. With them almost always being stored in cases, covered in this cool thing called box art. Then as technology advanced and other companies started trying their hand at this whole video game fad, we started seeing more and more of these things being stored inside discs rather than cartridges. Xbox, PlayStation, Dreamcast, GameCube, it was all still the same physical format when you break it down, but it was obvious that better, more powerful ways to contain these games were still being looked into into as graphics and just overall scope of newer titles exceeded what older configurations could handle. However, nowadays we have a nice blend between the two types here, as cartridges have evolved to be almost as powerful with the Switch, while other consoles still use discs. Though, what if we stop to consider neither? Then there's always digital games, the alternative way of distribution that actually originates a lot further back than you'd think. In the early 1980s, the Atari 2600 had a way to access digital games for a limited time via dial-up called GameLine that was discontinued shortly after. And in 1994, Sega launched the Sega Channel, where consumers were able to link their Genesis to a cable television wire with an adapter in order to play select Sega titles, demos, as well as use cheat codes. A service that was also cancelled shortly after in 1998 due to current technology back then rendering it outdated. And those are only a few examples. Though, if we're being honest, everyone just kind of knows it because of things like the Nintendo eShop and PlayStation Store and Xbox Game Store in the modern era, which is what we'll be focusing on anyways. Now, the basic gist and main appeal of this type of format is how you can go online, search for whatever game, buy it, and then play it all so conveniently through your home console. Which, by itself, sounds like the superior way to go about the video game purchasing process, right? So then, why does it seem others have a conflicting opinion about this? Is it nostalgia? Bias? Or is it something I'm personally not seeing? Well, while I'd usually love to plug my ears and ignore anything that opposes my superior opinion, I hear thinking can be good for you, so I will use this as an opportunity to do just that and debate which side of the spectrum is superior. So, physical games, eh? What's so great about owning them? <laughs> oh, let me tell you.
If you wanted to, you could sell it. What a great example, you can get rid of it. Nice. Okay, okay, to be fair, this is an actual benefit, as usually online stores, looking at you, Nintendo, don't usually allow for refunds, and when they do, the option is only available for a short window of time after the purchase. Well, if you were to buy the real deal, you could decide at any time to just sell it on eBay or at a vintage store. And if you do decide to keep it, well, you don't have the issue of being restricted to a single console. Say, for example, someone wants to borrow it or your console breaks. Although, of course, nowadays all your online purchases are saved to an account to be re-downloaded at any time, so that last point is a bit outdated. And also, I'll admit, they do take up a bit of house space, especially when you have a problem. As well as the potential for them to get damaged over time, either by accident or neglect. Oh, but by far the worst issue is the fact that you have to buy these at a store. I mean, full, in-person, human-to-human interaction. One of my least favorite things to do on the release day of a game I want is figure out which type of employees I'm willing to put up with that day. Do I want to beg on my hands and knees for a staff member to unlock the glass case like a pathetic whelp, or be pestered about memberships and if my personal information is in the GameStop database? Not to mention the fact that it could just entirely be out of stock when I get there. But with digital, that's never a problem, as the second you buy it, it's ready to download. Shit, you can even play the games on their launch day around midnight, when they have yet to release in stores. Those people practically get it early. That's not even mentioning the very common trope nowadays of digital exclusive pre-order bundles, Xbox's admittedly good Game Pass service, or just the fact that swapping between games doesn't require you to get up from where you're sitting to replace a disc slash cartridge. The entire digital process is overall much faster and convenient. So why? Well, I think it all comes down to personal taste, really. Do you like modernism, or are you annoying? And, like, yeah, maybe owning a game digitally is the superior option when considering efficiency, but what about fun? Maybe I like the unique case designs, and the box art, and the void they fill. Who's to say? Plus, who has enough memory storage to house all this anyways? I guess you could always uninstall the ones you aren't currently playing. But what if I want to go back to said game? In the time it takes to re-download it, I could have beaten the thing twice over. And again, why do that when you don't even need to choose? Yes, it is only one very specific example, though you can kind of see why people, including myself, don't want to deal with that. Larger SD cards can be expensive too, especially for a casual consumer. And, you know, it's not like I don't dabble in the dark arts of online game shopping myself. Sometimes there's titles that don't even have a physical counterpart, mainly indie games and re-releases of older titles, in which, yes, I will sacrifice a bit more storage than usual for said product. That being the case, in the end, I'll personally always stick to the side of buyable plastic. I just hold myself to a higher standard, I guess. Even if that does mean I have to skip out on cyber deals, and earlier access, and saving time, inconvenience, but at least I can do this. Yeah, the revelation's hitting me too. Which is weird, right? Man, do you make poor choices, I hear the voices say. But just because I can name more benefits about this side of the market, doesn't mean it outweighs anything these things are trying to accomplish as well. You can't replace the essence of novelty, and for some, I believe it's about how jumping through all these hoops of going out of your way to find and purchase a game at an actual store, as well as getting up to swap out one cartridge for another, is just part of the fun and the video gaming experience, like they may have done back then before other ways of access were as common as they are today. Dare I even call it nostalgia. And none of that is inherently bad. I still sometimes get that short childhood rush of excitement whenever buying a game physically. Looking over at that shelf of titles I've collected throughout my entire video game journey is like a museum of so many different pinnacle memories of my life, which by itself holds more value than any digital code sitting in my console. It just is. And it's nice. I also understand that some people don't get that same feeling, and that's totally fine too. You're also free to explore whatever side fits how you live your life the best. I'm just giving justification through my own experience. 
So to sum things up, if you happen to be a casual consumer who's not sure which fashion of game purchasing they should go for, and are in need of a clear answer, I would honestly tell you, how the f*** should I know? But if you're just looking for a bit of guidance, I would say if you have a lot of storage on your console, get them digitally. If you don't, and aren't too bothered by the lesser convenience, then get physical. Not in that way, obviously, but you just, you know what I mean. However, that being said, again, it's all about personal preference, you do you, everybody's different, we're all special snowflakes, okay. Hmm? Oh, oh, we're back? Oh, oh, uh, well, thank you for that very... <clears throat> Thank you for that explanation. Uh, let's bring in our second professional here to give his side of the argument. Thank you for joining us, sir. Do you think you could briefly answer why this topic is something people even care about? Video games! You either own them or you own them. And either way, people are gonna give you shit for it. That's right, you clever non-title reader. I'm talking about physical no, no, versus no, 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 no. digital no, not again. copies Cut the feed! Video. Cut the feed! Well, looks like the answer to that hot debate remains a mystery. That's all the time we got for this segment, folks. Up next, my resignation. <laughs>